Hey everyone, I'm Alex Roy, your trusted John L. Scott Realtor in Eastside, Portland. It is September 2022, and as many of you probably already know, this market, this real estate market is transitioning. And this video, we're gonna be talking about what is a transitioning market, why is it changing, who are the winners of it, and then some great tips for home sellers and home buyers, things for you to think about if you're considering making a move at some point in the next half year to a year. So before we get going on that, I just wanna remind you, my name is Alex Roy. I am a realtor that works in Eastside Portland from St. John's on down to Milwaukee and all the way out to Gresham, Troutdale, Happy Valley, servicing all those areas. If you have any questions about the information that I'm covering in the video today, feel free to just pick up that phone, call or text me or write me an email with your questions. I am happy to chat with anyone about real estate anytime. And if you want to have private consultation talking about your options as a home seller or a home buyer, schedule that with me today. Super happy to meet you and talk with you about your options. All right, so let's get started with asking this question, why is the market shifting? And you know, before we even get into that, let's take a look at some indicators to show that yes, the market is shifting. It is transitioning to a little bit more of a buyer's market out of that frenzied seller's market that we've seen over the last five years. Not talking about a huge crash in uh, the housing market. It's not a bubble. That's not what we're seeing, but it is transitioning. And so how do we know that? Well, let's start by looking at this graph of months inventory for single family homes and condos across the three counties around the Portland metro area, Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington County. And to understand this, we do need to understand what months inventory means. Months inventory is an indicator to explain the uh, buyer rate of activity versus amount of homes that are available. So imagine that all of a sudden, no new homes are coming on the market. The only homes that can be purchased are ones that are existing currently on the market for sale. And then we ask the question, based on the buyer's rate of purchasing homes over the last month, if that remained constant, how soon would all the homes be sold out? And that number in months is your month's inventory. So if it's crazy, intense buyer activity, a strong seller's market, month's inventory number is gonna be very low. We have had a really low number for the last five, six years. Well, we've been very squarely in a seller's market, but we're starting to see that shift up a little bit. As you can see, this is going back to this time last year or back into June of last year and you know, even at this time last year, just seasonally coming out of the summer into the fall uh, through the summer, we do see that uh, month's inventory tick up a bit as buyer uh, activity decreases, but we have significantly ever since, you know, uh, May on through the summer months, that month's inventory really grow. Inventory is growing and the buyer rate is slowing down. That's already started to fall into August, could uh, partially because there's a few less homes coming on the market and buyer activity is picking up. Those two coupled together start to reduce our month's inventory, but it's still a lot higher than where we were at last year. So little indication of a transitioning market. Next slide up, let's take a look and kind of considering that um, month's inventory. Let's break out those numbers that kind of create that month's inventory and look at numbers for single family homes, existing, new, and pending. And so the green line are each month new homes are coming on the market for sale, yeah, old homes, new construction homes, but new listings are coming on the market. The blue line shows all the ones that went pending that month. Buyers made an offer on it and the seller accepted the offer and the yellow line is showing all the homes that were already existing on the market but hadn't sold last month and they roll over to the next month. They're still for sale. You can see that at this time last year, we had pretty low inventory, low existing number of homes. There were a lot more new homes coming on the market in those months of June, July, August than there were existing ones and the number of homes that were going under contract was far more than the existing ones. And so we call that our rate of absorption would have been quite high. Um, buyers were buying up at least more than what was existing. And as it moved forward, we're definitely keeping pace with the new ones coming on. 
And then uh, naturally, as you have seasonally, all of those numbers start to die off as you get into December and around the new year, and then they start to pick up again, lots of new listings coming on, the buyer activity kept pace with it, and this is when we had really low interest rate numbers and they were still down in the mid-high threes, and buyers were buying up like crazy, keeping the existing that would roll over to the next month low, and then as interest rates start to climb and as we seasonally in uh, June and the spring months, uh, April, May, uh, June, start to have a lot more new inventory come on, uh, we started to see that existing inventory really starting to grow. And this is the big indication that as we were coming into May, the number of pending offers, when that should have been keeping track up with that, that really started to drop off. That's where we see that month's inventory really start to grow. And this is one of the indications right here. We're starting to feel that transition of the market. Here's another big indicator that shows that, well, we can't keep pushing prices up in Portland uh, like we used to. Year after year, we would be seeing 12, 14, 16% uh, appreciation in home prices year over year on a 12 month rolling average. Now, here, let's just take a little snapshot of Southeast Portland. You can see uh, Highway 84 is right there. There's the downtown. There's uh, the 205 and the river. So we're all in the Southeast Portland area. I uh, just took a little snapshot of this a couple days ago and I said in this map, show me all single family homes that are currently for sale of all price points and have been on the market for more than seven days. So just don't show me any of the ones that just came in the market in the past week. Let's just look at ones that didn't sell their first week and have been on the market a while. That was 313 homes available for sale right now in Southeast Portland. And then I asked the question, of those, how many reduced, they dropped their price in the last two weeks? And that was 117 homes. That's 37% uh, of the existing homes that were for sale that hadn't just been listed in the last week, but the existing homes had dropped their price in the last two weeks. And so sellers certainly starting to hear the national news about home prices following, worried about will their house still be sitting around on the market. Some sellers are very motivated to sell because they're looking to purchase, they're looking to move, and now are actively trying to sell their home by reducing their price. That's a pretty high number for a uh, percentage of homes that have had a price reduction in the last 14 days. Certainly did not see that number at other times over the last couple of years. So here's a, now the why. Why are we transitioning? And the biggest reason for this is interest rates increasing. They're Using the bankrate.com mortgage calculator, I wanna show you a little example of how buyer's purchasing power has really fallen since the interest rate has gone up since the start of this year. And so here I have an example of a person who is looking to purchase a home, get a mortgage, um, back when the interest rate was 3.5%. I'm gonna keep everything else the same in this, that the down payment that this person has is $40,000, it's a 30 year loan, and we're keeping the property tax the same, uh, roughly around $5,000 uh, property tax in the year, homeowner's insurance, $100 per month. So that's all going into that total monthly payment, and I'm keeping those constant. At 3.5%, bankrate.com's mortgage calculator says that you could get a home price of $520,000 and your monthly payment would be just under $3,000 a month. But if we up that interest rate to 6%, where we're seeing a lot of interest rates right now, remember I'm not a lender, I'm not quoting mortgage rates to you, but I'm just showing the effect of the interest rate on how that changes your purchasing power. At 6% and we hold all of these other factors the same, uh, $40,000 down, your ability to uh, purchase a home and still have the same monthly payment has now been reduced from $520,000 to $400,000. That's a huge, huge drop in what a buyer can now purchase with the same factors. The only thing changing is that the interest rate has gone up. So without reading into it too, too much, 
the main takeaway from this is that by the interest rate going up, buyer's purchasing power has been reduced and that simply means that at each price point, there are fewer buyers that can purchase those homes than there were a year ago or even at the start of this year. So that brings us to our next question, who is winning? Who's winning in this transitioning market? And I've got three winners for you. First of all, home sellers with detached single family homes, you guys are still winning. Absolutely. Let's look at average home sales price of single family homes across the three counties. This is in thousands of dollars. If we're looking all the way back to uh, 2019, uh, summer of 2019, that average home sales price was just above 500,000. Now, in the summer of 2022, even though we are starting to come down from a peak of earlier this year, well, you're still still well above, just uh, up above the 675 mark. And so even though our average home sales price have started to fall ever since interest rates have started to rise uh, just a couple months ago, we are still doing far, far better than even our peak um, uh, in the springtime of this time last year and certainly doing better than we were in late uh, the third and fourth quarter of 2021. So the second group that wins home buyers that are shopping for condos. Portland's condo market has uh, struggled to a degree. Let's take a look at that, uh, some data on that. Here we're looking at condos for sale, the new listings and the pendings. We kind of saw this chart earlier before the yellow line being all the existing inventory that was on the market rolled over to the next month. The green is all the new inventory that's coming onto the market, new listings, and the blue is pending. And what is really been the norm with condos is that the number of existing has always been more than the new ones coming on the market. And those two together have uh, either one of those has been well above the number of uh, pending where offers made and offers accepted. And so that just means that the rate of absorption is really low and you put your uh, condo on the market, you've got a lot of competition out there and you can expect that you might be sitting around for quite a while unless you're pricing it really aggressively. That did fall and drop off right around New Year's and uh, we had a brief little period at the end of the year where new inventory condos were just not coming on the market at the end there. And finally, even though the amount of pending was dropping by uh, January, it was getting pretty close to the amount that was existing there. Um, and so it had a little period where the rate of absorption was pretty good. But look at this, it has separated right out again. And so really through this summer, what this means is that buyers that were out there and it shows that there was less buyer activity to compete against. If you were a buyer, you had less other buyers out there competing uh, with you for those condos. That competition is low and your selection of the number of condos available is very high. Those numbers have started to fall a little bit, few less coming on the market and that inventory is starting to drop as the buyers are starting to purchase again. But this huge gap right here simply means Buyers have a lot more condos to look at and shop uh, through before having to feel rushed about making a decision. I think that there are a lot of motivated condo sellers out there right now that would be very happy to look at an offer. And finally, our third winner in the market, people that are selling and buying a home at the same time. Now, there's a lot of different ways that that scenario could play out. Obviously, if you are selling a small home and uh, trying to buy a much larger home that you will then need to take out a mortgage on again, you're affected by the interest rate. That higher interest rate now is hurting you. And it's not as good of a situation as it is for a person who is selling a larger home and buying a smaller home and they're able to use all of their net proceeds, use their net proceeds to pay entirely for the new home now all cash. They're not affected by the interest rate. They are a winner in this situation. And it is good to note that when a market is transitioning and it's shifting from a seller to a buyer market or a buyer to a seller market, if you are selling and buying at the same time, it really doesn't matter if house prices are going up and going down because 
even if you are selling your house for less than you could six months ago, the house that you're buying, you're able to buy for less than you would have bought that same house six months ago. So you might be feel like you're losing on the selling end, but you're winning on the buying end, so it is balancing out. That's a very general concept of that. But then when we also factor in the fact that the interest rates are higher, yes, folks that are downsizing right now, great time to be doing that. Definitely winners in this transitioning market. There's also more inventory out there for them to look and for you to possibly find, you know, take a little bit more time to find the home that you're looking for. Doesn't feel quite as rushed with huge amounts of competition and multiple offers driving up uh, that purchase on the buy and making it a bit more stressful and difficult situation. That's calmed down. This buy and sell at the same time, a little bit easier than it was this time last year. So that brings us to the point of what are some great strategies for sellers? How do we get our home sold in this transitioning market? First big thing to talk about, pre-listing improvements and repairs. This is something I love to talk to sellers about when I'm brought in to uh, do a CMA consult where I'm gonna, you're gonna show me your home, we're gonna do a little tour together so that I can prepare a report and give you a recommended list price. We're also gonna look at that home together and I'm gonna be able to give you recommendations on what I think would be great value added improvements that are a good return on investment before you list the home. And as our inventory of available homes on the market grows and as sellers we have more competition when we put our house onto the market thinking of our house as our product and we have more product competition we want our product to stand out making the pre-listing improvements and repairs that much more important that's where a great benefit like uh, john l scott's market ready plus program can be a huge help and this is something I'd love for you to ask me about and I'd love to talk about it uh, in a very quick nutshell. It is simply this. John L. Scott, my brokerage, can cash advance you with no fees or no interest up to 30% of the equity in your home towards pre-listing improvements and repairs by licensed contractors. So hey, if you're wondering, oh geez, I got a really old roof or a really old furnace or this carpet looks really rough, I'd love to replace these things, but I do not have the cash in my pocket right now to do that. John L. Scott uh, can advance you that money. I can help get you that cash, get those uh, repairs done before we list, and then all of it is paid back when the home sells out of the proceeds of the sale of the home with no interest rates and no fees. And it may sound like a difficult and daunting process to a lot of folks. I want to tell you, trust me, I am here to help you through that whole process, get estimates, review them, get the contractors approved, get the money advanced, make sure the work is completed properly and in a timely manner. I am there to hold your hand through all of that if that helps make it easier for you. So. Another one is offering a home warranty. This is something that if you've got maybe an older furnace, older appliances, AC, something like that, it can be something that you can provide with the listing and saying to the buyer, hey, we will give you one year's uh, uh, home warranty so that all the appliances and all the utilities are protected and covered in this house because home warranty is different than homeowner's insurance. When those appliances or that furnace break down, the homeowner's insurance will not cover that, but the home warranty can. And if you're offering a premium home warranty package uh, with the sale of the house to the buyer, that can make your house look more attractive than one that is similar just down the street. And really happy to tell you this, for the rest of 2022, as a special promotion to new clients, I am offering as part of my marketing package to provide that home warranty coverage along with the listing for a one-year coverage to buyers so that your home can look more attractive and stand out on the market. Great thing to give me a call about and talk about. And that is one of my preferred ones that I like to work with is the Old Republic Home Warranty Program. Excellent coverage. Hey, even if you own a home right now, you're not thinking of moving or selling, consider home warranty coverage, especially if you have older appliances. Huge lifesaver when something breaks down. And lastly, pricing appropriately. It's really important that we're not overpricing homes because when we overprice homes in this transitioning market, you can say that you can be patient on 
waiting for the right buyer to come along. But if all of the other homes for sale keep trending down in a downward direction or they're pricing a little bit lower than what they were four months ago, you will always be standing out with your higher price. Now that is not to say that I want all my clients to be listing at a low price and losing out on uh, the uh, you know possible proceeds from the sale of their home. The important thing to do is strike this delicate balance of not overpricing and not underpricing, not leaving money on the table and not shooting yourself in the foot by just trying to ask for way more than what the rest of the buyer public feels that it's worth. That's where realtor expertise come in and that's where my comparative market analysis, my CMA report is going to help explain why I recommend a certain list price. Here's the strategies for the buyers and there are several great ones. First one is staying on top of new listings. Being aware of new stuff that is coming on the market and being the first to hear about it helps you as a home buyer out there trying to find that home win. If you see it first and you're able to get your offer in first, sometimes that can be all that it takes to beat out other buyers who might have been able to compete or possibly pay a little bit more than uh, you could. So staying tuned to new listings coming on the market. One great way to do that is to sign up for uh, automated uh, searches and that's something that you can do through my website on my John L. Scott website or have me do that for you. Always happy to set you up with even one of the premier ones, uh, a proper MLS system auto search having those very specific tailored search results show up in your inbox every day or every second day or once a week depending on how intensely you are looking for homes. Another great strategy for buyers as interest rates go up is to consider buying down the interest rate and rate buy down strategies. Essentially, you will pay cash out of pocket at the time of closing, pay that to the lender to buy a lower interest rate. Now you may not have that additional cash in your pocket, but you know that you could actually get, in some cases, the seller to pay for your rate buy down. It's something that could be written into an offer and negotiated in the course of the transaction. Another thing to talk with me about uh, when we're discussing writing offers and making uh, strategies on home purchases. There's also lots of great lending and grant program options out there. Uh, they can be a little bit hard to find because they're not necessarily all in one place, but check the, com uh, the description of this video on social media and I'm going to have some links to uh, the Oregon Association of Realtors and the Portland um, Association of Realtors uh, websites where they do have some of these resources where you can find out if there's some grant and lending uh, programs or um, down payment assistant programs that you may be eligible for. Good to check those out, see if there's anything that you could use. And then finally, things that are going to make home buyers winners is to know the numbers and be a savvy consumer. It's important to shop around and check out different lending programs and to understand different lending programs. And to do that, you're going to want to talk to more than one uh, mortgage lender. And if you need any mortgage broker recommendations, I've got several that have uh, done amazing jobs for my clients in the past. They've got a lot of new lending products that some of the larger banks do not have and they're definitely worth a conversation uh, especially if you're just thinking and just barely kind of considering purchasing a home, first place to start is with talking with the lender to find out what's available to you and what you can afford. And if you need help finding the right lender for you, I've got loads of great recommendations. So thank you so much for watching this whole, whole video. There's been quite a bit of information that I've put out there to you. And like I said, if you have any follow-up questions about the stuff I've talked about today, specific questions, email them to me, text me, or give me a call. I love chatting about real estate with anyone I get a chance to. I'm Alex Roy, your trusted realtor in Eastside Portland, working with John L. Scott Real Estate, working hard for your success.